Hoping to give you a quick tutorial of how to use the AP Classroom. When you first arrive after you log in, this is the kind of the landing page, which I did find kind of confusing. The easiest thing to do is just to gently kind of scroll down till you see the word AP Classroom, and then right here you want to click on this button right here that says AP Classroom, and then this should take you to your question bank and your progress checks that you can assign. So then this is where, again, you have your progress checks right here. These are predetermined by the AP College Board. In chemistry, we have nine units that we could use, the FRQ or the multiple choice. It does include the entire unit. So sometimes, unless you've covered everything in that unit, um, these are not the best until you've finished an entire chapter, or sometimes an AP Chem chapter is plural. The progress da dashboard, I really don't use that often. Um, next is the question bank is what I use all the time. So this is definitely where I spend almost all my time making either assessments that we can use in class, you making some practice questions, um, coming up with other ways to just use this um, information that's been given to us uh, to help your students learn their, your topic. The most common thing that I use is this unit topic. You just pull down, and then for your your you know your subject, you're going to have a lot of different uh, quantities of units or sections. Again, for chemistry, we have nine, and then each of those have um, a multitude of other parts in that unit. So, for example, let's say I want to make something on just stoichiometry, a pretty common topic in chemistry. If I unclick that and I go back to here, you can see that we have 1,014 questions available for us in AP Chem. So let me go back and just click that one. That'll limit it down. These are going to be all the FRQ or multiple choice that the College Board deems something that you could use to practice to study for the test. The next thing I like to use is the question type. So let's say we're only going to use the multiple choice. That'll narrow it down again. And then sometimes to me that's still too many to make some kind of useful thing out of for your classroom or with, for your students, um, whether it's an assessment or something just to use to learn. So I hit the perfect exam alignment that usually narrows it down to just the questions I want. Then after that, let's say you're satisfied, you can, you can hit preview and you'll actually see what the question looks like. Um, so if you click this button, it's just going to open up a bigger screen and you'll have that exact question and then you can even hit um, what the correct answer is right over here where it says um, question and scoring guidelines. So then um, I'm just going to say that maybe, you know, I'm just going to make a quiz and say I'm going to call it 4.5 stoichiometry. And then I'm going to hit every question that isn't a secure question. And then be careful. There are going to be duplicates. I found that common in AP Chem. I'm not sure if that's in all the subjects, but kind of look. And if you hit the preview button, you can also look at these um, as you scroll along. So I can show you that in just a second here. So if I hit preview, you can also um, look at the question and you can just click along this way. So maybe I hit add at this point and then you move to the next question by hitting this little arrow button. I find that it kind of takes a lot longer and usually I'm okay with the questions that they have. So I just go through here and, and try to make a um, practice assessment right now with any question that's not a secure question. If you're going to use the secure, you should have a lockdown browser installed. The other thing is I would recommend a lockdown browser for these, um, just period. Okay, so there's the ones that have the little shield, so I'm not picking those. Those are the ones that you have to use the lockdown browser. And then um, I found that it's, it's helpful to, again, look for duplicates. So I don't know if you noticed right here, there was a duplicate right there. You can always go into the question, but man, those are the same exact uh, thing if you look right here. So usually the second one is the better one. A lot of times the font has changed. It's a larger table. Uh, and maybe again, that's just something that happens with just the chemistry ones. I'm going to hit OK. It's just saying I don't want that question anymore. I have found to have trouble sometimes. So I hit save before I go to another, uh, another screen. So until I go to the second screen. And then I'm just going to hit add. I'm not going to look at them and not worry about it. Again, here's another sign that there's probably two questions and the second one usually is the one that's better. So I'll just assume that without looking at it because sometimes you don't, you know, you just want to make a quick assessment so that you could talk through it with your students. So then when you're done, you can hit save quiz. It might ask you to save over the top of that previous one and that's fine. And then um, you could hit preview at this point and again that bigger screen will pop up. I'm just going to move on and hit assign to make this sure this video is under 10 minutes.
I have all my AP students in one AP 2020 because that semester our school, they switch hours and sometimes even teachers. So you can hit unlock assessment, let students see their results if you want them to. You can set the date and time. So maybe you want them to start on you know Thursday at, uh, let's say, pick a time here, maybe 8.30 in the morning. And then you're going to give them until maybe the next day. You're going to give them till I don't know, let's say, maybe go to some kind of PM. Maybe you don't want them staying up too late, 10 PM, OK? You can also have a time limit. So for some reason, if you wanted them to practice, can they get these questions done? Um, I think this looked like about 30 questions. So maybe you want to give them 60 minutes or 45 minutes, depending on if you want one or two minutes per question. The other thing you can hit here is you have another choice down here. Let's move this a little bit lower. You can scramble the question order. You can also assign it as a print test, but then it devalues all of those things. So now that I did it, I have to go back and fix all that if I really wanted to. Then you just hit assign and that will put it into that set of students that you have for that test. I'm going to close out of this because I really don't want to keep that assessment. I'm just going to move this over here. And that's pretty much it. So I hope that helped. Um, again, progress checks has you go back to um, the predetermined questions that you don't have a choice. The question bank I like better. Um, I can show you one more thing, which is um, this progress check right here. You can look then and see just move this over here. You can look and see, you know, what students have finished it. For mine, we're doing a lot of these as just practice things uh, in class per se. So I'm not worried about their scores, uh, but you can look at how many students have finished something. Uh, the unit progress checks I'm using more right now as we study for the AP exam. This is also something new. They just have now these optional student practice questions where they can get used to sending in their information with photos or screen capture or um, whatever they're going to use for the test. So you can see here that I have a lot of students that have finished that one. Um, they got a lot, like a green area means that they're done and there's the kind of class average for that. The last thing again is if you want, you can go back to your progress checks right here. And um, I have been assigning these so I can look a little bit at the, at the you know, where they are at. Um, again, that one's locked, means it's closed, students can't complete it anymore. Um, you can hit view progress, you can also close these back down. So like this one's still open, so maybe I want to close this. So let me wait for it to load up here. And then I can just go back and say, you know, um, I don't want it, uh, so I'm going to hit yes. So I'm going to put it back to locked. And um, you can just go back to your progress check again. And then hopefully you can see that I locked that one also. So here's another one that I could lock back down so I can hit view progress and then go back to here and you can unlock or lock it. All right. And then the students can't get into that anymore. So it's due and done per se. All right. So I think that's about it. I hope that helps some of you that want to still, you know, use the AP classroom. These are just things that I looked here. These are just things that I still have to score. Uh, to finish. So I just click on that and it would take me to that student's work. And I'd have to find the student's name and then, you know, look at what they have to finish. Okay. The other thing is here you got mark complete. I don't want to do that because they're not done yet. And then settings just takes you back to this original settings where I put the date and the time that things are due at. All right. I think that's it. So hopefully that helped you uh, use the AP Classroom better. And good luck, all of you that are AP teachers and students.